Hi ladies, how are you? I wanted to take a moment and just go through setting you up on this Saturday, Sunday weekend. And I wanted to discuss meal planning and prepping, but before that, I wanted to just briefly get into um, Shakeology. Many of us use that, and I wanted to just uh, visit the importance and the blessing behind using Shakeology in case there were some fun tips that you didn't know about. First and foremost, that it's filled with over 70 superfoods. It has <laughs> macronutrients, micronutrients, it has probiotics, prebiotics, uh, fruits and veggies that you wouldn't necessarily eat. Like, I don't like papaya, I won't eat it. I'll maybe have it dried, but that's about it. Uh, or maybe frozen without me knowing it, but I wouldn't delightfully enjoy it. Uh, the product itself actually comes from outside of the U.S. It's, and it's not necessarily from one location. All of the different, like for instance, um, for the vanilla, it comes from Madagascar uh, in a dehydrated dried substance. And then it comes together and it's tested in a shake form. So it's tested before and it's tested after the shake is made to make sure uh, that there are no metals, there are no pesticides, and it ch is checked for authenticity. And so I call it a drink of integrity because, especially here in the U.S., I know that not all of you guys are in the U.S., but, um, you know, having to be concerned with if what we are eating is really what it's said that it is. Uh, and so I feel really confident knowing that at least a very minimum having this and giving it to my family is something that I can be guaranteed that we are getting the true nutrition of what it says that it is. So I just wanted to take a moment and um, let you know what an amazing product that you have taken the time to invest in. And if you haven't, um, that's okay. And if you feel like you want to, or you want to try it, let me know. I can send you a sample. It's no problem. Um, but don't feel like you have to. I, I always encourage for those who want to use it, that the time will be ready for them and you'll use it. Uh, so I just wanted to touch on that briefly. And then um, for meal planning and prepping or setting yourself up for success for the weekend and for the week. It's really for any day that you are eating, which is <laughs> every day. Um, it is extremely important to make sure that you know what you're going to eat, not only for yourself, but for your family. Um, I know sometimes I get overwhelmed when the kids are like, what are we going to eat? And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> so um, a, a few things that I find to be helpful. Um, is um, before I ever visit the store, I make sure that um, I have a list ready. So by doing that, what I do is I check my in-home inventory, check my freezer, I check my pantry. I use a lot of bulk items. Um, so like, I'm sorry, let me adjust myself. <laughs> um, whole grains, beans, uh, nuts, those types of things. So when I buy those from the bulk um, section of my store, the store that I go to, so um, I want to check all of those things and make sure that I have everything in stock and that way I can put it on my list if not. And usually I have a list on my refrigerator. My refrigerator is, let's see if I can kind of point. No, you can't. Oh, there's my hand. Okay. Yeah, my refrigerator is like right there. It's kind of dark so you won't be able to see it. But if you see how I moved my hand and then it got lighter. So I'm going to show you, point, look over there. And when it gets light, there's like a, a pad that's right there to the left of my, my, I have a calendar and there's a pad there. And as things are running out, I make sure to write it there because I'm not going to remember, I'm still going to overlook things, um, you know, as I'm looking through my pantry and stuff or refrigerator. So especially if it's things that I don't use all the time, like for instance, uh, we always have mustard in stock, but I don't always look to see if I have mustard. I just assume that it's there. Uh, so there have been times where I, it wasn't there. <laughs> so those are the things I like to make sure that I have written down on my list. So um, check my inventory, uh, write down on my list what's needed. Um, I check my local ads and make sure that I am meal planning and I am um, going to be buying what is in season and in, um, on sale. So uh, a few things that I will get regardless would be, um, like I like avocados, I love them. Uh, and I might choose to pay like a dollar an avocado, depending on my mood. Uh, I may not have it with every single thing. But, um, or for instance, I like having raisins with my still cut oats. And so um, they are usually, depending on where I go, if it's to Sprouts or Fraser Farms, which are the two places that I go to, um, 
Fraser Farms, the lowest price, unless they are on sale, is one ninety nine dollars a pound. And they're on sale maybe once every three to six months. And so that still is um, at one forty nine dollars a pound. So I'm not going to necessarily hold off and buy six months worth of raisins just because it's 50 cents less a pound for raisins. I'm just going to buy them. So just to give you an example of an item that I might buy a regular price regardless. Um, so I make a list and I stick to it. I make sure that I, I really try hard not to bear away. I do leave a cushion sometimes between five and $10. If maybe there is a meat or a couple of items that are on sale that are not on the ad that are just too good to pass up. Um, then I do leave a little bit of wiggle room for that. And so what I do on my, um, meal plan is I write out my meal plan and then I write out a proposed amount. So for instance, I know if I need to get a bag of potatoes, um, the most I'm willing to spend on a bag of potatoes be $3. So I'm going to write on that side $3. Um, and then so on and so forth. And so I have like a proposed amount, let's just say $60 is kind of usually my range, about 60 bucks. And then when I am in the store, I uh, make sure that I then write the actual amount. Um, and so that way when I'm checking out, it's not like I'm surprised that my bill is $60 or less or a little bit more. I know exactly what I'm going to be spending. And I always go in with cash. I don't use uh, my card. Um, I mean, there are very select, very, very few um, times where I do use my card. I'm, I'm pretty much a cash person. And so if there is something that is outside of what I have the cash for, then guess <laughs> that gets put back. So um, once I do get home, I make sure that uh, I have my first one to two meals for the next day or two planned, like ready to prepare. And so I try to make sure that I prepare like my rice, my beans, um, meats, anything like that. I try to make sure I prepare those. Um, for our family, we eat meat about once every two to three days. Um, for cost reasons, we like to use grass-fed um, hormone and um, antibiotic free and so that's a little bit pricier meat so I do try to spread that out a little bit further so I uh, tend to use more fruits veggies for our meals and grains and legumes like beans and beans um, so yeah so I get those all scheduled out I have a pressure cooker it's like my favorite thing in the world and I use that to prepare a lot of my food and so um it does a lot of the work for me so as I'm I'll hurry up and put a meat in there and let that cook and then once that's done you know well maybe I'll do rice and then so on and so forth rice and then beans and then meat or whatever um but I usually keep things separate I don't like make full meals and then um in case like I change my mind as far as what I would like to make and maybe I want to do bean and cheese burritos instead of nachos like supreme nachos or something uh so um yeah so put up as far as placement in the refrigerator i make sure that i remove everything that um, is in my refrigerator i remove it out and then i put the um new stuff in the back and then i put the old stuff that i need to use pretty much like right away i put those things in the front that way things don't go bad i'm such a stickler on things going bad i don't like that um, so I told you about the, oh, okay. Um, as I'm cutting up, like, so for instance, let's just say I have veggies and rice scheduled for that night. I'm going to be cutting up carrots. I'm going to be cutting up cal uh, celery, um, broccoli. So I'm going to cut up extra of those things. That way we can have those for snack items as well. Um, and then make sure that I have enough fruits rinsed off for my kids to be able to grab as well. Um, and then, um, if you're making meals, I always try to make sure that I have freezer bags in stock because uh, you might make more than you need. And so you can go ahead and freeze that. Or if I'm finding that maybe we've already had the meal for maybe two days, I just put the rest into a freezer bag and I freeze it for the next time. I label it and I freeze it for the next time. Or you never know when somebody is in need of a meal and you can bless them with that, with that <coughs> really giving yourself extra work. Um, and so if you have it prepped, you're going to eat it. And so that's the reason why I try to make sure that I have everything ready and easy to grab and quick for my family, not just for myself. Um, and if you have a plan, you're going to more than likely you're going to follow it and putting it on my calendar. Like I shared with you right up there, I have a calendar that everybody gets to see and commit to. And so they know that we're going to have fill in the blank for that particular night. And if, 
they're not a fan of it, then it's not like that I haven't given them that heads up that that's what we're having. Um, so I have had something else in mind that was outside of, oh, okay, here we go. Yay, I made notes on it. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're being realistic with um, what is to come as far as your schedule. So if you have a really heavy schedule, you don't want to be doing first time recipes. You don't want to be uh, doing gourmet recipes. You want to do more quick ones that you can um, grab and go or um, have ready for you. So maybe that would be a meal that you want to plan the night before and that way all you have to do is just reheat, reheat or maybe sandwiches or maybe burritos, quick things. Um, and uh, be realistic also uh, for those of us who have like our cycle, monthly cycle, um, you know, you got to be realistic of like the week before and the week of that you're more tired, maybe a little bit more moody, a little bit more emotional. Um, all of those things are going to affect you. And especially since we are on the focus of appetite and food and nutrition, um, it is so important to make sure that you really stay on it during those times because we are emotional beings and we're going to sometimes find that we eat more, especially emotionally during that time of the month. So just keep that in mind and um, pick and choose your cheat meals as best as you can. Um, and try to make it a one time for that day or um, for that weekend, whatever it is that you're choosing. I'm not trying to be arbitrary by any means. I'm just trying to help encourage you um, to stay on your on your, on your goal and your focused goal. And, um, but don't beat yourself up. I'm sorry. Don't beat yourself up. If you find that you didn't meet your goal for that day, um, tomorrow is a new day or your next meal is a new meal. So, um, and don't ever feel that you're going to work off what you ate. Um, you're going to eat off what you ate. And so what I mean by that is let's just say that you ate something you didn't feel like you should have. If you drink psychology, go for your psychology for the next meal. Um, if you've already had it or you don't drink Shakeology, make yourself a nice salad and just call it a day. Drink some water. Um, so I want to leave you with that. And so for your task, um, please share with me what you are planning for the Did next week or how are you preparing for a good week to come. And um, please share that in comments below. I'd love to hear that. And I hope you are having a nice week, weekend. Thank you. Yes.